All right, Drewby, let's get our dance. It's like a reunion right here. The hot nine OGs. That's right. What's all up? Yeah. Oh, let's see what you got. Let's see some forearm. Forearm dance. Ooh, you got tats. You gotta give me some of them tats. That's awesome. Welcome to another hot nine at nine inch brought to you by phone sites. Phonesites.com forward slash love. Go check it out. And uh, tonight's guest is an original member of the Hot Nine at Nine ish, Mr. Drewby Wilson. So, welcome. Welcome. What's up, y'all? I wish I could start freestyling, but I just don't have it in me. I started to, but then it goes dark, and I'm like, oh man, I need to back up a little bit and get some of that out. I got to go work out, get it in. So, but that's awesome, man. So, um, this is great, man. This is really cool. Kind of a nostalgia because, you know, we originally started the Hot Nine at Nine ish just to kind of rebrand. And there's a whole new crew that came to Break Free Academy back in, what was it, like the spring of 2019? A little bit before that, right? We were like midwinter or, or yeah. winter time. So, uh, we're rolling up, man. We're rolling up on year number two. And it's like, well, things have changed quite a bit. So, so let's let's kind of open up. If you don't know who Drewby Wilson is, he's the VP of Break Free Academy, a well earned, well deserved title, and uh, he lives by the very things that that Ryan has taught, the very thing that is equal and open access to every single person that comes through our program. So I'll go ahead and let you take it from there, man. What's what's changed for you? Man, um, gosh, I wish I could share with everybody just how crazy my life has become over the last few years since implementing the G-Code, joining the Apex program, and, and really doing a deep dive on personal development, right? Like, because that's the biggest thing uh, for me that's made the most change in my life uh, has been getting very focused on, first of all, who I want to become, and then putting the steps in place on how I'm going to get there. Uh, that, and that personal development really is what keyed that off. And it all comes back to having a system and a process for achievement. And that's, that's one of the hardest things about personal development is that nobody really knows like how, how to get there. They know what they want, uh, but it's the, the steps to getting there that tend to confuse people and, and honestly scare them uh, from getting where they want to be. You know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into anything and everything that we do. And, you know, you always hear um, people saying, keep it simple, you know, keep it simple sales, keep it simple, stupid is what they used to say in radio. Um, brevity is key, especially with our attention spans. Um, but, but tell me, like, now that you've been in there and you've been through that process, um, are you able to keep it that simple? Or is it just the principles that you have to keep simple? You know what, man? I always find that when things start getting screwed up in my life and it seems like I'm facing more roadblocks and having more troubles, it's because I've moved away from the basics. Uh, you know, you try to overcomplicate things and do this and do that and, and try to accomplish all the stuff at once. But when you just go back to the basics, hey, I need to do this, this and this on a daily basis. If I get those things done every single day, that's when the success comes back or, or things start firing on all cylinders again. But the, the moment you try to add 17 different pieces all at once, it throws the whole machine out of whack. And, you know, it's like building a race car, right? You, you build the car, you start with the frame, you put the motor in, then you put the go fast parts on it. But if you just tried to put the go fast parts on the frame, it's, it's really not going to do you any good. So you have to go through that process and you have to simplify it and make sure you're doing it in the right steps in order to go at the speed that you're able to truly go at uh, as, in any area, whether it's in your fitness or in your family or in your business, right? And, and even in your faith, like all of these things have a process. They all have steps to go through and, and you just have to keep it simple, man. You have to go step one, step two, step three. But so many people come in and say, hey, I want to go from step one to step two to step six, not understanding that step six requires four and five to make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, we, we all follow the same, same line, right? The same, same process in terms of, 
you know, like for example, the G code, you know, we follow the G code. And uh, so I, I, what I want to do, and I did this with our, our other guests too, is, is basically break down that process because each one, each category has that process. Um, and each one can go levels deep into multiple processes. But let's, let's start with a very basic, just a basic overview of, you know, like gratitude. Let's start with gratitude since that's G1. What do you do? Um, what is your process for gratitude? So gratitude, obviously, you know, the, the first thing we say in the G code is when you wake up, you have to, to think about the things that you're grateful for. Like that first thought that pops into your head. And funny enough, I've actually noticed myself doing this in my dreams. I don't know if it's like that, that few minutes of REM sleep right before you wake up, you know, like when the alarm kicks in. Um, but I find myself like asking, what am I grateful for? What are the things that I'm like, as I'm coming to consciousness and I'm, I'm having that moment of waking up at 4 a.m. because that's never fun. But I'm, I'm asking like, hey, what am I grateful for? What are the things that I'm going to use to power me through the day? What are the things that I know as soon as I get up out of this bed are there waiting for me to give me that power and that inspiration to get out there and, and really be who I want to be in this life? and leave the legacy that I want to leave for not only just myself, but for my wife and my son and the people that I surround myself with. And, and that gratitude is so important because it truly sets the tone for the day, right? Like I know I can wake up and the first two things that are on my list of gratitudes every single day without fail, my wife and my son, because Without them, none of the shit that I'm doing matters. Yes, I could go on and be successful and have all that, but but for what, right? There's a reason that I want to have those things, and it's so that I can create the life that I desire and share it with my wife and my son. So they're always the first two things on my list of gratitudes. And then from there, I try to think like, okay, what are some of the things that I appreciate that are helping me to achieve that life? that I want for my wife and my son. And so sometimes it might be an apex member. It might just be the apex group as a whole. Uh, you know, it might be a certain piece of technology. It might just be the fact that I got an opportunity to wake up and have another day to go out and achieve whatever it is that I want to achieve. But I know that gratitude has to be there first. That is the building block for the entire day. And that's why I make such a big deal of sticking to the G code every day. I mean, I could pull up my app right now. I'm on day like 500 in a row uh, because the consistency is what matters, right? If I, if I veered away from that strategy of like, okay, build the foundation first and then build the empire, the empire would crumble. I mean, it'd be like trying to build a house on a pile of sand. Sure, it might get going, but eventually it's going to fall because there's no foundation to be built upon. I love it, man. And and there's there's one more part to this process too. And and I know you gave like the bird's eye view, and I love that. And you know we we have that in common too. We put consistent things on our on our daily gratitudes. I post mine on social media because it's number one, it holds me accountable every morning. But also it also reminds me like so I can see it. The third thing is other people see that that that's being posted consistently. But I was having a conversation last night, and the second part of gratitude is the why so i'm i'm grateful for being alive why i'm grateful for my spouse why i'm grateful for breakthrough academy why i'm grateful for sunshine etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's let's talk a little bit a little bit deeper let's go one more level deep in that process um because i think sometimes people are like yeah i'm grateful for this I'm grateful for that my life is wonderful and it's wonderful dot com but they 100 they, they don't yeah, get I mean, core. if you don't have a why, then you're really not as grateful for it as you think. You're just going through the motions and checking the boxes, right? And for me, um, I know my why is typically, like I said, it's it's why I, I, I'm grateful for those things because it's allowing me to create the life that I want. Um, and that ultimately that my wife and my son being the first two things on there you know, I could come up with a million reasons why I'm grateful for my wife. And I probably should do a better job of, you know, writing out a different why every single day. I don't, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I, I should probably do a better job of that just to remind myself why I'm so grateful for her. I mean, today 
uh, I put on there that I'm grateful for my wife. And then I made a post on my Instagram story because she makes me breakfast every day. Like I go up early, I do my cardio workouts, I get it in. And then when I'm upstairs right now, I'm on phase one. So I'm doing those stupid ass cold showers, which are awful. Um, but when I come down from my shower, she's usually got breakfast made for me, you know, maybe a bagel, uh, some fruit. She's got my vitamins all set and ready to go. Got everything I need. And because she understands that I need that energy because I've already gotten in and I'm, you know, two and a half hours, three hours into my day already. And so that's one of those things I'm extremely grateful for. Like she doesn't have to do that. She's making my son lunch. She's getting him breakfast going. I mean, she's got her own life to live, but she takes the time out of her morning every morning to make sure I've got my breakfast set. And I mean, that's, that's important. Right. And same thing for my son. Why am I grateful for him? Well, because he makes me a better man because I know I have to get up and do these things every single day with consistency in hopes that he'll catch me in the act of excellence, because that's what I want him to have. I never had that as a kid. My dad was a scumbag. I, I learned everything. Everything I learned from my dad was what not to do in life. And there's a lot of folks who have that same experience. And so for me as a dad now, I know that I have to implement a lot of these things so that he can have a good example. That's my why there, right? I, I'm grateful for him because he makes me a better man in order to be the man that I always wanted when I was his age. And, and that why is really key because that it ties so closely with the gratitude of, all right, well, let, let's say you're grateful for your soft bed, but why? Well, because I actually have a place that I can lay down and be comfortable at night. I'm not out on the concrete or on a park bench. Like I'm grateful for technology. Why? because it allows me to share my story and share my message with someone out there who needs to hear it. That's one of those things. And it comes back to, like you said, when you post your gratitudes, um, there are people who are watching, who are wanting to live vicariously through your story. And if you didn't take the time to post those and share those, whoever needed that message that day wouldn't see it. And that's really the ripple effect that you were, you know, kind of, you know, referring to earlier. Um, we have to do these things. We don't have to. We get to do these things, I should say. We choose to do these things in order to set that example for someone who needs to hear that message. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. So, you know, when you're going through and doing your gratitudes, make sure you say what. It can be a person or a thing or a concept but go deeper as to why and answer that question. You don't have to answer it out loud. You don't have to go in depth with the rest of the world, but you need to know why you're doing what you do because therein lies the truth. And, you know, it's very easy in today's society to become very flippant. We have access to everything and anything that we want at any time of the day, any day of the week and anywhere around the world. But, Gratitude helps you to keep a lot of those things that you have, that you cherish, that you appreciate, that you truly appreciate. And the law of the universe states too, if you don't want it, you have to send it back out there because it doesn't belong to you. So I love that, man. I love that you shared that. And the motivations are the same. We've talked a lot before in previous episodes and conversations in the office and things like that, just on you know, family and like the kind of men that we are. My brother and I just had that conversation last night. You know, it's like, when you know how to become a better human being, it's your responsibility to demonstrate it, live it, and then help others when they need help. And they'll come to you. You won't have to go looking for them. It's the foundation of everything that we do in our lives. So that takes me to our genetics because we can't help other people if we're not loving ourselves. And in genetics, you know, and being predisposed to this, to that, like, it, you know, Jury, I'm sure you're like, we used to talk about food and we still joke about food. Like you and I like to eat. We're food eaters. We're consumers, you know, pop tarts, mac and cheese. What's your favorite, like, like trash food? Favorite trash food. Um, man, I've been really, I, and it's maybe it's the Texas side of me now, but I've been really into brisket chimichangas. Like I just love a deep fried, brisket filled chimichanga just smothered in cheese queso and then just a whole shitload of hot sauce man that's just my my vice right now also <laughs> swedish fish i love swedish fish if you give me a bag of those man i will fuck up some swedish fish so we used to do this when i was in the office with drewby i'd drop on drop some sour patch kids on his desk just be like 
And he would do the same thing too. I'd be like, man, I'm going to be good. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start eating clean. I'm going to start eating vegetables, eat more like a vegetarian. And next thing you know, boom, right? Like it was, it was hilarious. It was, it was great. But Drew would show up and just drop a sack load of nasty goodness on my desk. And I loved it. So that sounds terrible, but also hilarious at the same time. But yeah, yeah. you know, a hundred percent. And that is one of those things. And it's cool having, you know, having had you in the office because we shared that, but also we recognize that it wasn't the best choice either. Right. And, and as our man, Mark Zalmanoff always says, you got to make good choices. Um, and, you know, genetics is definitely one of those things that we have to choose to be smart about. Um, I come from a family that's very much predisposed to being overweight and just not having, you know, very good health conscious routines. And at one point in my life, I mean, I weighed 315 pounds. Like I was just a very large man. Um, and when my son was born, uh, let me back up a little bit. You know, at one point I was about 315. I made some decisions and said, you know what, I'm going to quit drinking soda and sugary drinks. Cause I was that dude that I'd put down a six pack of Coca-Cola cans every single day. Uh, I'd always kept a thing of juice in the fridge so that I could wake up in the middle of the night, go in, take a big swig of the juice from the jug and put it back. And you don't realize like how much sugar and how much unnecessary garbage is in those things, especially when it comes to like beverages, right? Cause you just pound them down. They taste good. You just cool. Move on throughout the day. Um, but just unneeded calories and stuff that just really wasn't good. So I'd made some decisions. You know, I got down to like 210, 215 pounds, but I wasn't eating right. I was just not eating. I was just keeping myself super busy and making, you know, just, just not eating correctly. And I got down to about 215 pounds. Then I met my wife. Uh, we started dating. And you know what happens when you get into a relationship, you, you start going out, right? You go and you eat at different restaurants and you have a bunch of cocktails and you make not so great choices. But, and you know, Kayla, but uh, we are foodies 100%. We love good food. And, you know, over that couple of years, I ballooned back up to like 275 pounds, especially when she got pregnant with Duder. And, you know, we spent I think probably two and a half weeks where we ate Thanksgiving turkey dinners almost every day because that's what she was craving. And, you know, and take the biscuit and smear it in the gravy and put some turkey on there. And it's just, again, not good choices. Um, and for me, when my son was born, I was overweight, uh, obviously not moving at the, the pace that I wanted to move at. I had some things going on, you know, with my business life at the time that I wasn't totally satisfied. So I would turn to food as my crutch, as my like escape from the stresses of what was going on. But when Duda was born, you know, I, I kind of looked around and was like, I don't want to be that dad who can't go and run and play with his son without being winded after five minutes. I'm not, I refuse to be that dad who's sitting on the park bench uh, and, and watching my son play and being like, oh, son, I can't play with you. Like, daddy's tired. I, I won't be that person. I absolutely refuse to be that person. And so, you know, I started back on this journey of, okay, what am I going to do to set the example for excellence? Uh, I started waking up initially and just going for walks, right? I was not totally happy in my life. So I said, all right, well, let me get up early, go for some walks in the morning, listening to some positive messages, a lot of YouTube videos and podcasts and things like that. You know, that's one of the first places I found Ryan was his podcast. And then, you know, listening to books on tape for personal development. Hey, how do I become a better human? How do I become the man that I'm destined to be that I was put on this planet to become? And from there, I got back into cycling. Uh, I've been riding BMX since I was a little shithead kid at 12 or 13 riding all over town, you know, so I was like, all right, well, let me pick up a road bike and get out and put some miles in because that's a great way for me to escape, right? That's kind of my meditation time, my me time in the morning. And man, I just went balls to the wall with it. I started saying, all right, well, I love cycling. Let me try some of these endurance rides. Let me see how far I can push myself. And, you know, I started with 10 miles, 15 miles, 25 50. Uh, I was like, oh, shit, if I can do 50, I can definitely do 75. Well, I did 75. How about I do 100, right? I had a buddy of mine who was doing some cycling with me. And he's like, man, I know these idiots. They talk about these century rides. They go and ride their bike 100 miles in a day. I'm like, that's fucking crazy. There's no way. Uh, turns out it's really not as difficult as you think. 
Um, and, and actually I've gotten to a point now where the, the longest ride I've done was about 217 miles, it took me 17 hours. Actually, what was cool about that is I did it as a birthday gift to myself and to go with doing that long ride and, and having that achievement. I did it as a charity ride and raised like $2,200 for a charity, but it all comes back to making that choice, right? Hey, I am choosing to be smarter about the things that I put into my body. I'm choosing to go out and put in the work that 98% of the rest of the world doesn't want to put in because I want my son to see what it takes, first of all, right? Because nothing in this world comes easy. But I also want him to understand that he can have and become anyone that he wants to be on this planet if he's willing to put in the work. And a lot of that comes back to making that choice. And that's, you know, for me, the genetic side of it at this point, now that I've become an entrepreneur, right, I work for a company, I'm an employee, but I'm also a, an entrepreneur at the same time. So I'm kind of that entrepreneur, I have an opportunity to build an empire and create the legacy that I want. Um, and in order to do that, I have to operate at peak performance. I mean, you don't put sugar in the gas tank of your Ferrari. So why would I keep filling myself with garbage? And then expecting to have the energy to wake up at 4 a.m. every day and then work until, you know, six o'clock and go home and still have the energy to be there for my son and my wife. Um, you can't. You have to make the right choices and do the right thing so that you have that energy to be as successful and productive as it takes to reach the level that I know I'm destined to be on. Yeah, I love that, man. And I love the fact that number one, you post yours up every day, like I always seeing your stories, you're, you know, out for a bike ride or walking or running, it doesn't matter, even when you did the first iteration of 75 hard, and it was raining and stuff like that, and you'd be outside in the cold, you know, because that's how it is like one week, it's hot in Texas, next week, it's like cold, but, um, you know, I, and I want to touch on that for a second, because this is one of those things, like for me, at first, when I started posting those pictures of myself, it felt like a really douchey thing to do, right? Like, oh, it doesn't count if you don't post your gym selfie. But what I came to realize with that is, and it, it kind of goes with, you know, the social media thing in general, people were watching that. And now I've done it so long and been so consistent with it that first of all, it's an accountability thing for me, right? It's kind of like you talked about with your gratitude posts every day, uh, but it's an accountability for me. But I get messages from people all the time that are like, hey man, I love your consistency. I love that you post your rides every morning or your walks because that inspired me to go out and start walking. And this is messages from people that have never once liked, commented, said anything on any of my content, but the point is they're watching. And so that's the example, right? This, it all comes back to setting that example for the people in your circle. And while it felt like a real weird douchey thing to do, now I'm, I'm excited to get up and post that because I know there's one person out there who's going to see that and it's going to change their day. It's going to motivate. It's going to inspire them to change their life and become who they want to become and who they're destined to be um, because I've decided that I get to have that opportunity, right? I get to get up early and go and work and do all these things and, and put in the time because I know it's helping someone else create a better life for themselves. And I love that, man. And here's the thing. I can, again, I was having a conversation and you and I have talked about that too. I bet you're in better shape now than you were when you were 30 years old. 150%, like a, a way, way better shape. And even like when I started with 3FA back in, you know, late 2018, early 19, I mean, back then I wasn't really out of shape, but I mean, I probably lost 25, 30 pounds. I put on a significant amount of muscle. My cardio is way better than it's ever been. My strength is better than it's ever been. And that all gives me a better mindset and clarity with how I approach things. Because now I, again, it all comes back to the process, the systems and the routine, you know, but by getting my, my mind in line with my body, I can run at a much faster pace and for much, much longer. Yeah. How you do anything is how you do everything. So bingo. And that all ties into work too. Like everything that we do, like in the gym, the time we put in, like starting with our gratitude, what we're grateful for, you know, keeping those things in our lives and those people in our lives and then putting in the work to stay healthy and functional and productive. It bleeds into the work that we do. So let's talk about our grind. Let's talk about how, and I think this is probably a mystery for a lot of people And you and I are always looking at weekly wins forms and things like that, that come in from our clients and apex. Um, we got some that are on self-accountability and we have some that are, you know, working with coaches, but 
the common theme that I see is based around time management. So let's like, why don't you kind of kind of explain like what your day looks like on an average day? Because I think people romanticize and think, man, it must be so easy to be Drew B, man. He's just up there in the kingdom at Break Free Academy. It's got to be totally just piece of cake for him, man. He's winning. I want to win like that, but they don't know what it looks like. So what does that look like? Give, give people a little insight into what that looks like. Yeah. So, and this was something that I had to learn the hard way, right? It, it, we all as entrepreneurs think I'm going to grind, I'm going to grind, I'm going to grind. I'm going to just put in 19, 20 hours a day and I'm going to crush it. Well, there's a lot of other keys to success and grinding and making money is not the end all be all. So I had to learn this lesson the hard way. Um, but I had to get very clear about, again, what do I want? Why do I want it? And how am I going to achieve it? And part of the, the what and the why for me is I want my family. I want to have time with them. Um, and I want to have the systems and the processes in place so that when I'm spending time with them, I don't feel guilty about not being at work. And when I'm at work, I don't want to feel guilty about not being with my family. So I had to make sure that I every single day have time in my calendar for my family where I'm focused on them specifically. And sometimes it's not just my wife and my son, you know, I have a family of choice. So I need to take time to be around the people that I appreciate and that I'm grateful for. And how do I do that? Well, I live and die by the calendar. So my alarm goes off at four o'clock every single morning. That includes Saturdays and Sundays. Why? Because consistency matters. And, you know, if I got up at 4 a.m. Monday through Friday, but then slept in until nine on Saturday and Sunday, it would be that much harder to get up at 4 a.m. Monday through Friday. You know, Monday would come around and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I got to get up at four o'clock tomorrow. So I just said, you know what, let me just run it on a daily basis. So I get up at four o'clock every day. I go downstairs, take a big old piss because, you know, 75 hard drinking all that water. Like it's just inevitable. Um, I try to make sure I do drink a lot of water. Like I always keep a big jug right next to me. So I, I hydrate first thing in the morning, go downstairs. I do my gratitude exercises. I post up my inspirational content for crushing the day, right? Because I've created that crushing the day brand as part of my entrepreneurial journey. And I give a little bit of motivation, inspiration. I throw my headphones on, get some, you know, powerful YouTube videos fired up, Les Brown, E.T., Ed Milet, Ryan, you know, these guys that inspire me to become a better person. And then I do an hour of cardio first thing every single day. Now, again, because I've added in strength training, sometimes I get up at 4 a.m. and I go get Kayla and dude her up and we all pile in the truck and we go to see Mark Z over at the gym and we do some strength training. But it's always an hour workout every single morning is the first thing that we do. Once I'm done with that, I come home, I get myself cleaned up, and then I spend an hour having breakfast with the family and getting Duda ready because he's in school now. So that that hour with my wife and my son is is important to me because that's part of the day. Of, you know, if I sleep for six hours a night, I only got 18 hours. So I've got to be very specific with each of those hours, you know, and what I'm going to do with them. So from 6.30 to 7.30, we're having breakfast. We're talking about what we want to do for the day. We're having those personal moments. 7.30, we get in the truck, take Duder over to school. I've made the commitment to taking him to school every single day because that's one of those things that I think he'll remember, right? Hey, my dad was really, really busy and he worked a lot, but you know what? He still made time to drop me off at school every day. That's a memory I want him to have. And again, there's so many folks out there that are on this entrepreneurial journey that are just like, well, I can't do that. I got to work. I got things to do. Well, you know what? Taking care of your family is a thing that needs to be done providing for them and creating those memories is important because if you don't, I mean, you don't know how long you're going to be on this earth. So they, you, it, nothing could be worse to me than Duder being like, man, my dad was never around. I, you know, I wish he would have been around more. That breaks my heart even thinking that that could be a possibility. So I got to make sure that I put that time on my calendar. Right. So I drop him off at school. I'm at the office by 8, 15, 8, 30 every day, uh, Monday through Friday. Then from 8.30 to 4 o'clock, almost every single day, Monday through Friday, I'm, I'm working, right? I'm here. I'm doing the grind. I'm taking care of clients. I'm helping people. I'm doing interviews like this to share that message and show people, hey, uh, it's not always cupcakes and rainbows. Sometimes you got to put in the work to get where you want to be. And ultimately, the goal is to do enough of this work while I'm young and have the energy so that I can buy back more of my time 
to spend it with my family, right? I want to create passive income streams and opportunity that pays me way, way in the future for all the work that I'm doing right now. But again, at four o'clock in the truck, go home. And then from 4.30 to 6.30 or 7.30, that's family time. That's important. Do I have to get on the occasional sales call? Sure. Do I have to respond to some messages? Sure. But you know what? That is family focused time. That is time where we have dinner every night. We spend time together and we create that opportunity to be together. Because again, we only have so many hours in the day. And if I didn't take the time to put it on my calendar, I would forget about it. I'd make excuses as, oh, I got to be here at the office late. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I can tell you from experience, having been that person, it's a quick way to destroy a relationship. You know, my wife and I went through some very difficult times because I chose to work more than I chose to work on our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's that real made, talk, man. Verified too. You know, and that's uh, and that happens to everybody too. You I mean, you can have, that's, that's why they say some people would, that seem to have everything like money. They, they're just not, they're not happy and fulfilled. And usually it's because of that. There's nothing better than having your financial house in order, your emotional house in order, your physical and genetic house in order, and then your love life. You know, your, your group, the people that you're tied to, it's so important. Otherwise, like the other shit doesn't matter. It's just for looks and for vanity. And it just doesn't really fucking matter because what people can... fail to realize is that when you get those things in order, the business side gets way, way better. Instead of being at work and being like, fuck, my wife's pissed at me. Oh, my kids hate me. Uh, you, you know, you're distracted by these different things. When you got your shit in order, man, you can be far more productive. You can get way, way more done throughout the day. But again, you have to be prioritized. You have to know your what, your why, and your how. And so that's, you know, until 7.30 at night, 8 o'clock, we're, we're having family time. And then I always, I've made the commitment to reading a, a book to my son every night before bed. Again, because these are the memories, right? These are the things that I think are important. Uh, I put my son down for bed. Uh, send my last little couple messages for the evening, kind of lining up for the next day, looking at my calendar going, okay, what do I got to accomplish tomorrow? What are the things that I know need to get done tomorrow? Because I need to be prepared for what's ahead. I need to know what's coming my way. Otherwise I'm going to end up like the Titanic and I'm going to hit an iceberg that I wasn't you know, looking for that was right in front of me the whole time. And it's going to sink the whole ship. So, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, that's, settling in, putting Duda to bed, getting my things in order. And then I try to spend a little time with my wife right there in the evening where we talk about our day. <clears throat> we kind of talk about what we've got going on and what we want to do. Uh, usually we'll sit in bed and read together instead of watching some idiot television show, uh, you know, some shitty Netflix series that yes, that's a fun thing on occasion, but we're both on that personal development journey together. And that's a key part of our relationship was getting in line and alignment with what we wanted out of life. And that really, like I said, man, it, having gone through that, looking back and for everybody who's watching or listening to this, get very clear about your relationship and where you're wanting to take it. Because if it's one-sided, it's gonna be one-sided forever. Like you have to sometimes, I don't wanna say make sacrifices because that sounds bad, but you have to make a decision to say, hey, these are the things that I want. These are the things that you want. This one probably isn't going to work out. This one over on your side isn't going to work out. But if we have, you know, three out of five, we're going to have a pretty solid life together. And in bed, I'm, I'm in bed by 10 o'clock, man. That's one of those things like you guys can tell you if you're, you're messaging after 10 o'clock, you ain't going to get to Drewby because that boy sleep because that yeah. alarm goes off at four o'clock every single day. That's you right. know, and on, the, on the weekends, I spend a little more time with the family, but I'm still putting in three, four hours of work on the, the weekend days too, Saturday and Sundays. I mean, I'm, I'm working seven days a week, but I can do that because of the way I've created my time and I've prioritized what's important. So that's, I mean, that's my days in a nutshell. It, it never ends. It's just on a constant loop because consistency is what really matters. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. And I know you kind of started talking about group a little bit too, but there are a couple of elements too that you missed out, like not, not missed out, but just things that you didn't incorporate. But the question is this, because after all of the work that you put in, all of the commitment, the dedication, you know, you've made that rise to, you know, VP of Breakthrough Academy, you've, you know, developed your own software, right? 
You've got your program, you've got your branding and everything crushed the day before it crushes you, which is doing phenomenal. Um, make sure you connect with Drewby on that too. But you know, what's happened in terms of your group? Like, are you just hanging out with regular people? Are you hanging out with uh, like, who are the people that you have to hang out with now at this point in your life? After going from being a kid, you know, weighing 315 and just eating whatever the hell you want and then going through this transformation, this metamorphosis. You know, and that's, that was one of the most difficult things for me at first and a lesson that I had to learn um, as you level up, right? As you change who you are and what you're becoming, there are certain people and relationships in your life that you have to cut ties with. Not that they're bad people or, and some of them might be, but like you have to truly change who you surround yourself with to become who you're destined to become. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I have a lot of friends back in Toledo. That's where we're from. We moved down to Dallas a little over a year ago to be in a room with elite individuals because I knew that if I wanted to get to the level that I know I'm going to be on at some point, I had to start getting around the people who were at that level or were on the path to that level so that I could draft alongside them, right? Think about like a, a NASCAR race. The, the people who win more often understand the power of drafting and getting behind the people who are running at full speed and then using that as a way to be like, hey, I'm going to run with the big dogs, but I'm going to kind of hang out here in the group a little bit and, and I'm going to let them lead the way and I'm going to just work hard and, and stay right on their heels. But knowing that I'm on their heels and I'm running at their pace at like 60 percent of the effort. And then when they you know, start peeling off, I've still got 40 percent in the tank to skyrocket and roll through. And, and that's what happens in your relationships and the people you surround yourself with. When you're trying to get to that next level, you got to get around the kind of people who are at that level so that, first of all, they can show you how to get there, right? Because everybody wants to think, oh, I'm a self-made man. Well, there's no such thing as a self-made man. Anybody who's ever reached any level of success had someone along the way who showed them the ropes or taught them a thing or two about how to get there. I hate to tell you guys, you're never going to be self-made. That's just the way it is. That's a fact of life. There are people who you need in your life that will help you get to where you want to go. So you got to think about that. And that's, that's one of the things I've done is I've leveled up my circle, right? Instead of just running around with drug dealers and gangbangers like I did as a kid, now I'm running around with business owners and CEOs and investors, folks who are creating opportunity for thousands of people. That's what I want. I want to be an opportunity creator. And in order to do that, I have to surround myself with opportunity creators. I have to surround myself with the kind of people who have built businesses and created brands and built a message that people buy into so that I can learn from them. Sometimes you got to surround yourself with people that you don't even realize are a key to your success. You know, getting around guys like Pastor Keith and, and folks who are on a different level spiritually or in their relationship so that you can understand what it really takes to have that. That's right. I love it, Drewby. I love it. And listen, you can be just like Drewby too. And, and I mean that in a very good way because he's already done it. He's done the work. He's shown you what's possible. Before that, like Stuman was doing that. There is a roadmap to anything and everything you want in this life. You just have to pay attention and look for the acres of diamonds that are sitting right around you. It's right, right below your feet. So Make sure you connect. How can people connect with you, Drewby? Um, you know, one of the best places to find me is on Facebook. That's where I spend a lot of my time, you know, facebook.com slash Drewby Rides. Um, also, if you go to connectwithdrewby.com, uh, I've got, you know, all my different platforms, Facebook, Instagram. I've actually got links to, you know, crushing the day. So crushingtheday.com is my, my lifestyle brand. That's really what I truly live every single day is crush the day before it crushes you. I think that's a key component to creating the life that you want because life is heavy, man. It can be hard. There's a lot of roadblocks and obstacles that are going to land at your feet. But if you choose to crush them instead of letting them crush you, uh, that's that's really what's going to help you get where you want to be. That's it, man. I love it. Drew, I'm, I'm glad. We could probably talk for days, man, but I know you're busy. You got to get back to it and uh, make sure you crush the day before it crushes you. It's another Hot 99. It's brought to you by Phone Sites. You can build a website in five minutes. That's right a lead generating data producing website in five minutes once you get really proficient, but it's very simple to use. So make sure you get it at phonesites.com forward slash love. 
And uh, oh, listen, if somebody wants to jump into Apex, how do they need to get hold of you? Best thing to do there is go to jointheapex.com. You get to read a little bit about how we can help folks in their life and uh, determine that if it's something for you, you fill out an application. Myself or someone from the team will have a conversation with you because ultimately we want you to be successful. We want you to have the opportunity to create the life that you want and learn from the people who are doing that. So join the apex.com, man. It's real simple. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Drewby. Let's do this real quick. Let's take it out. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to find a good one for us. We're going to have dancing on the hot 99 ish. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the hot 99 ish. I mean, it's got to be a party. That's why we got the rave going on, right? You know, just, all right. Here we go. Oh, this is slow. This is like low energy Robert stuff. What's going on, Danny? We need the hype. Yeah, we need to hold on. Here we go. I think it's about to get hype. Is it, is it bass drop I'm coming? I'm not with Ruby too. My name is Danny G. You can do what you do. You got to get the G code from left to right and do it every day and do it all night. Hey, there we go. That's it, man. That's all I got for my skills. Love it. Thank you, I Danny. I appreciate that, you, brother. Super grateful for you, man. And uh, I'll be seeing you soon when we uh, meet up with the Apex. Yes, sir.